Today I am going to talk to you about Anna Berliner, someone who is often overlooked in the history of psychology. Anna Berliner, formerly known as Anna Mayer, was born into a Jewish family in Halberstadt, Germany in 1888. She started her academic career studying medicine at Freiburg and Berlin. While she was in Berlin, she worked in a psychology lab, and this is where she became immediately fascinated with its concepts. In 1910, she married physicist Siegfried Berliner, and after marrying her, he took a position at the University of Leipzig. At this point in time, women were severely disadvantaged and faced scrutiny for studying psychology. No one was permitted to study under Wilhelm Wundt's lab, specifically because having men and women work closely in a dimly lit room was to be avoided. So, while at Leipzig, Anna started her studies in psychology with Max Braun at a special institute. She was actually encouraged to go speak with Wundt about studying with him. After going to speak with him, he accepted her desire to study with him and attend his classes, because he felt after meeting her, there is no good reason why she should not let her. <clears throat> she did not study with him for long, but accumulated a lot of knowledge on experimental psychology, the history of philosophy, and his Volker psychology. In 1914, she completed her doctoral examination and became the first and only woman to ever receive a PhD under Wundt. Because of World War I, Anna was forced out of Germany in 1914 and moved to the United States. During this time, her work mainly focused on visual imagery as she continued to move back and forth between Germany and America. It was not until 1936 that she settled the College of Optometry in Chicago. She became the only faculty member and chair of the psychology department. She taught many courses in psychology, such as the Introduction to Psychology, Experimental Psychology, Statistics, Perception, Clinical Psychology, Personality, and Projective Testing. Her main areas of research was on visual perception and focusing on the link between psychology and optometry. She was different from other researchers from her time because one of her main focuses was to extend psychological concepts to other applied settings. Some of her work included One of her studies on applying visual psychology was done in 1918, titled Aesthetic Judgment of School Children. She asked both boys and girls from a variety of grades to take part in her experiment. They were instructed to rank a series of pictures based on their aesthetic value. They ranked them from most to least aesthetically pleasing by first choosing the one they believed was most beautiful, and then the second one, and so on. She was conducting correlational research to see which social factors, such as age or gender, are most influential in determining how similar students rank their pictures. She found that boys' rankings tended to be more highly correlated amongst other boys, and this same trend was shown in girls, that girls tend to rate pictures highly similar to other girls. She also found that children in the same age group, in general, tend to rank the images more similarly compared to other age groups. This particular study includes many different children from many different schools, and so she understands the importance of having a large sample size. She ensures that her experiment is as scientifically sound as possible. Through ensuring a large sample size, she is able to generalize her results, and she uses the Pearson R correlation to help her. She not only applies this research to participants outside of the lab, but her results in what people find most aesthetically pleasing is useful in other areas, such as advertising. This is a common thing done in her research. She focuses on applications of her research and results to not only other areas of psychology, but other fields that might find this useful. Through all of this, she advocates for a scientific study of psychology. Other than receiving her PhD with Wundt, Berliner had many accomplishments throughout her lifetime. She was selected as a Lifetime Fellow of the International Council of Psychologists in 1963. She was honored with the Apollo Award in 1971. She spent her whole life striving to be a proficient teacher, researcher, and psychologist. She applied visual psychology to other areas like advertising. Unfortunately, in 1977, at the age of 88, she was murdered in her home. She is often overlooked in the history of psychology because she had no groundbreaking research, but she deserves to be recognized as a woman who helped to open more opportunities for other women through her mere presence in the field.